Hi, um, I'm, uh, I'm Michael and um, I'm doing this presentation with uh, uh, Matt Stamis. Uh, uh, we're, we're talking about uh, life, death and Python. And um, uh, essentially what, uh, what we're really going to talk about is um, what you can what you can do with Python from, you know, from, from just starting from the very, very beginning. And the, the real, the, really the message that we want to get across is um, that no matter what you're doing or where you are, um, uh, you can you can start you can start somewhere and actually solve some problems um, within your within your hospital, um, and um, and you can you can do it um, you know just with a little bit of time and effort, really. Um, I don't think I've really introduced myself properly, so. Uh, my uh, my title is a clinical engineering fellow, and so I work in the uh, clinical data science unit at the trust. And it's a very new unit; um, we've only just uh, just started. So, and um, what we're aiming to do here is to uh, make uh, uh, clinical data uh, useful for or, or extract clinical data for, uh, for clinical research. Um, and I'll let Dr. Simons introduce himself. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Dr. Stammons. Uh, both me and Michael are clinicians. Um, my background, I'm a consultant gastroenterologist, but I spend half my time doing sort of data science and uh, trying to engage with all the stuff which is going to be the future of healthcare. Um, and I'm one of the directors of RUM, which is a system dynamics open source uh, community which uh, we started. It's not for, not for profit. We both work in the clinical informatics research unit, which is a division of uh, University of Southampton. Uh, enterprise partnership and we're both employed by University Hospital Southampton. Slides aren't working. Okay. Okay, so in medicine it's really, really important that we learn from our mistakes and particularly learning from death. And there's a process which is a national requirement in the NHS uh, to do this. And that's through something called the morbidity and mortality meeting. It's essentially um a, a an opportunity for for healthcare professionals to get together and talk about um the patients who have died in a certain period of time and understand um why they've died and if there's any learning that can come about from that um and, and obviously the idea is to to understand whether these deaths are avoidable and if there's anything that we can do to ultimately learn and improve from that and you know improve the clinical care for our patients. It's a very, very important task, but it is laborious, it's time consuming, and there's a lack of standardization. Um, I've been asked many times to present at mobility and mortality meetings as a clinician, and um, you know, uh, some sometimes last minute have been asked to collect all of this information for several patients, you know, it might be um, 10 or so patients um, to try and get all of the information um, prior to a mor morbidity and mortality meetings. It's uh, quite a difficult task uh, delving through uh, lots and lots of notes, trying to get all the relevant information um, for the meeting. Um, so um, what we wanted to do essentially was just see if we could speed up the process by taking the data straight from the source, from the databases, and um, then using Python and some open source libraries uh, to collate all the relevant information prior to each M and M meeting, so you know it speeds up the process. And um, if rolled out, you know, if you want to roll something like this out towards uh, all of the departments in the hospital, then it standardizes the process as well. So um, what we've used a library called Comorbidipi. And uh, this is developed by um, a, a, one of our excellent colleagues, Vishnu Chandrabalan at uh, Lancaster, um, who's um, to this uh, library, which uh, will calculate something called the Charleston Comorbidity Index. And um, what this will do is take some relevant information, age, height, weight, and some comorbidities and will uh, give you a percentage of the 10 year survival of the patient. Um, so uh, this is a small part of the information that you know you might want to have in it when presenting uh, 
in a morbidity and mortality meeting, but it's important information is paired with the clinical narrative so that you get a full picture of what's occurred around the patient's death and you know, obviously enable learnings to occur from it. Um, so what we'll do is we'll delve into the code. So um, Dr. Dr. Sanders will, will go through um, a little bit more about the GitHub repository and if you're new to Git and GitHub and all of this stuff, which might may you may be very familiar with, or you might be like, you know, what's going on? Why has it got such a strange name? Um, uh, so uh, Dr. Sanders will, will go through that as, as well. So I'm, I'm aware that, you know, we've got a very, we probably have a very varied audience here. Some people know exactly what this is and um, have seen th this. This is a Jupyter notebook. Um, and for some people who, who may have no idea what this is. So what I'm going to do is take come from uh, um, from the very basics and just assume that. You know, the minimal knowledge at this point, so because what we want to like I say, the message that we want to get across is that um, anyone can do this, really anyone can do this. And um, it's very easy just to, to, to hopefully want to make it, at least make it seem like it's very easy to do. Um, so. This is a Jupyter Notebook and, and one of the uh, great things about Jupyter Notebook is it's essentially, essentially allows you to write Python code that can mix this up with something called Markdown. So if I just, uh, this is this is basically Markdown and it allows you to, um, to, um, to, to create um, just pieces of text um, within, you know, mixed up with, with pieces of code. So, um, so that's really the beauty of it, and, and I'll I'll try and demonstrate why Jupyter Notebook is so popular as I as I go along, and and I think I'll make it clear. Um, there are problems with using Jupyter Notebooks, but um, that, that could be for a, a, another another time, another discussion. So, um, so we just import some basic packages, and again, some people will be very familiar with these packages, some people won't know what what of this is and again why they have such strange names um so pandas is a library we're gonna we're gonna uh, first okay so we're gonna import these packages so i'm gonna run each cell block as we go along and it's usually a bad idea to do a technical demo but we're gonna do it anyway um so pandas is one of the important libraries we're also importing our our comorbidipi library and that will give us access to the functions that will allow us to calculate the chance of comorbidity index. And we're also importing a database library called SQLite. Um, now, in real life, this is not how you would connect to it. You wouldn't use a SQLite database because it's um, it's not a production ready database. It's just a, basically a development database that um, uh, we um, and it's just, it's just uh, an example of, of, of how, how we do it. Essentially, you might come across this library uh, uh, called SQL Alchemy. Um, what you will need to do is probably get a little bit of help from your IT team if you want to do this, uh, but you'll need a username, a password, and an IP address of where the uh, database is located and, and uh, the name of the database as well. And then you can connect your database um, through this library called SQL Alchemy that we can port here. Uh, so SQLite uh, just allows us to create a, a database which is self-contained. It's a single file and we can actually connect to that database um, through a single, pretty much a single line of code here. Uh, so we'll just connect to that. And then if we run this, this will give us our connection object. It's just to confirm that we've got a connection there. Um, so uh, the next thing we do is we want to get the relevant information. And depending on you know your, your hospital's database, it might be really easy to do. It might be very difficult to do, depending on the structure of the database. Um, these aren't obviously the queries that we use. We just use the mock database, um, and um, they may be a little bit more complex than this. But um, those of you who are new to SQL, so SQL is uh, called structured query language, and what it allows you to do is just to query a database, and um, it's usually it's self-explanatory, and if I go through this SQL query just to begin with, just as an example, uh, give you just a flavor of how SQL works. Um, so essentially you select the relevant columns. Here we're selecting patient ID, the specialty admission date, and discharge date uh, from the relevant tables that contain those columns. Here we've got a demographics and an admissions table. And then all we do here is filter the data based on some sort of criteria. Um, 
So here you can see that we're just asking for any any uh, patients only in the gastroenterology specialty. And these are patients who've died um, between now and two months ago. Uh, so if we run that query, what we get is um, what we then do is use the pandas library. So this single find will read that SQL query in. And it takes in the connection object as well. And we get a um, this is essentially the the query that we've uh, constructed will get us this information from the database. So you can see we've got the patient ID, the specialty, the admission date and the discharge date, which is exactly what we asked for in our SQL query. Um, and then you can see uh, this patient with ID3 has been admitted twice under gastroenterology. This one's been admitted once under gastro gastroenterology and this patient's been admitted three times. And what we really want is, you know, we want those that patient, those patient IDs. We want those patients that have um, that have died, and we just want to get their IDs. But we we could just grab this list here, um, but then we get a lot of duplicates. Um, but that is exactly what we do. We do grab that list, and, and then we we filter um, and we remove those duplicates. So that's that's what we do in the next um, code box, and we get our patients who've died who are these these IDs three, four, um, five. And then we just go on to to select all of the other information that we need. So we, we're selecting patient demographics here. We're selecting the patient's comorbidities, which is usually a set of ICD-10 codes that's associated, um, you know, past medical history. We select the admission uh, information, and um, uh, we're, we're taking the height and weight from our physiology table. And um, you can see here, this is uh, we're filtering on the patients who have died. Um, so essentially unexpected indent. This is one of those this is one of those things you'll find in there's an the, equals um, that's appeared in front yeah, of the yeah. uh, that's what it's oh, very good, very good. Very Python doesn't like indentation in the wrong place, you'll find. Uh, so if you if you see this physiology query that I printed out here, it essentially will just insert that string into the query so it will allow us to filter uh, each of our queries according to the patient IDs that we've specified above. And all we're doing here is just reading those SQL queries in one at a time into two Pandas data frames. And as an example, that's one of our, that's one of the, the tables that we've asked for, the admission table. Um, the, the next block of code here is uh, calculating the BMI. Now, um, a BMI calculation um, is essentially this thing at the bottom here, which is the the weight uh, divided by the square root of the height in meters. Uh, but in order to get that information out, we need to do a little bit of data pre-processing here. Um, and what we're doing essentially is getting the average height and weight across multiple admissions. Um, there's arguments to say that what you know the best way of doing it, but uh, this is what we've just done, um, just yeah, for the sake of it. Really. I won't go into this too much detail, but just to just to point out this particular line of code which joins the two tables together, um, <clears throat> and um, I'm going to highlight this is because we, we use it in multiple areas um, later on. So if I run this run this piece of code here and just tell you about this line here, um, so this is a join. So it basically joins two tables together and it, it joins it on a particular column that you specify. So if I just show you what these look like, that's our patient IDs with their average height. That's our patient IDs with their average weight. And you see the patient IDs are the same across both those tables, which is exactly what we want. And it means we can join both of those tables together on that patient ID. And that's what we do here. And when we look at the BMI table, that's exactly what we get. That's a very simple concept, um, uh, and but a very powerful, important one. I'm going to rerun this code again. We've got all the right information. Great. So we actually have a BMI calculated there in the last column. Um, and then all we're doing here is just joining all of the tables together um, again on patient ID. So all the tables that we um, that we created up here are now essentially being joined together. So we just have all the information in one table. Now, 
an interesting side effect you get is when you start when you start joining tables together, you might find that the resulting um, table after the join becomes very 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 large. So we we have three three patients that we're dealing with here, uh, but now we have this data frame uh, or this table that contains 360 rows. Um, and the reason that's occurred, and it's, a, it's an important thing to, to bear in mind when you're dealing with a lot of data, in this context it doesn't matter because the data is just small amounts of data, but um, you have to bear this in mind and perhaps think about a better way of doing it if, if you come across this problem, because you can, um, can get these huge, huge tables um, if you do use this. Um, but the reason this happens is because um, each patient has a number of comorbidities. Here's the code here. These are ICD-10 codes. So if you have a patient with, say, 20 comorbidities, that row will be replicated 20 times. And you can see it's all of the same information um, replicated 20 times. Um, so that's the reason that, that this occurs. Um, and we'll deal with that problem a little bit later on. So um, this looks like a, 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 a quite a complex code block here, but essentially it's, it's kind of more of the same thing. Um, and the really important line is just this one here is where we calculate the comorbidity score um, by passing in the relevant information, which is the ICD-10 codes, patient ID and their age into um, the comorbid pi library. And so this piece of code will give us a data frame called CCI. And as part of that, we get the 10 year survival. Um, and all I'm doing in this piece of code thereafter is just combining that information back in. To our data frame. So again, we've got six rows. We did have 360 rows and the reason that we've reduced the number of rows here is now we're no longer I've, we're no longer looking at any ICD-10 codes. The comorbidity information is, 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 is gone now, and instead we've replaced it. Um, or, or we're now, all we want to really care about is the, the 10 year survival um, data that we've, we've got. So we've actually removed the, the um, comorbidity data from it. Um, and we're essentially looking at admission data uh, now. The reason we've got replications is because we know that this patient's been admitted twice, this patient's been admitted once, this patient's been admitted three times. Um, OK, so uh, we've included this 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 here is a, a function that looks at um, that turns all the column strings uh, containing date or date times into something called a, a, a date time, which is actually a particular type. So if you're new to programming, um, there are, you know, uh, variables have particular types. So, for example, if I said type five, this is a int which stands for integer I said. Uh, type of hello, uh, that's a string. So there's a type of variable type in pandas called uh, date time, and it's important to make sure that your, your what is a date time or a, a date stamp um, is actually uh, looks like a date time. Otherwise, you come uh, you you encounter lots of problems um, later on. So that's all that this function does, and we've just included it because it's quite common pitfall. And so when we pass the uh, data frame into this function, it will convert all of our string date time fields into actual date time fields. OK, so it basically looks the same. I, I say. I do this, which actually looks at all the types. You can see that our admission date is of type date time, discharge dates of time date time, so we know it's worked. It's great. All right, um, and then finally, all we do is we we want to just get all of the the relevant information um, out of out of our our table, um, and because we're looking at at the moment we are still looking at admission data, uh, we only want the most relevant admission, which is going to be. So what we do is we filter uh, by looking at the date of death, and filtering that between the admission date and the discharge date, and that will give us the admission that's relevant to that patient's death. You could argue that would just be the last admission, and that is another way of filtering the data, of course. So we're back to our three rows. And each row contains the patient ID, admission date, discharge date, uh, the narrative, which would be the discharge summary usually, 
and also the 10 year survival, which comes from the Comorbid Pi library. And then finally, all we want to do is just to clean things up. So we're just going to select the columns that, you know, that's really, really important. We get the final table containing all of the relevant information. And, uh, and that's that. Um, so hopefully that's just been useful, just going through a little bit of Python code, understanding, um, um, you know, that this this is it's it's not an impossible task if you've never done this kind of kind of thing thing before. Um, and I'll pass over to uh, Dr. Summers, who will uh, conclude the rest of the presentation.